Today is Wednesday, November the 9th, 2016, and the madman has done it. Donald J. Trump has become the president-elect of these United States. It's been a long, hard-fought battle. You know, last year when he started, I'll be honest with you, I thought he was joking. You know, when he said, when he announced it from Trump Tower, I was like, nah, Donald Trump going to be the president. But as time progressed, I grew to love him. You know, when he first came out, be honest, at that, at that time, I was a Ben Carson guy. I wanted Ben Carson to run ever since that prayer breakfast where he wrecked Mr. Barack Obama. We spend a lot of money on health care, twice as much per capita as anybody else in the world, and yet not very efficient. But as time progressed, it became more and more evident that it was Trump's time. He was destined to be here. And I'm not even really like a, a uber religious guy, but it just it just everything just fell into place to where he was the only guy that could do it. You know, because with everything going on on social media and just in the nation in general about the anti-establishment push that's coming from the people, Donald Trump just fit the bill, which is exactly why Bernie Sanders was doing very well until he got uh, schlonged by Hillary Clinton. But I digress. My whole point is that all the energy in the nation had to be channeled in a certain kind of way. And who was the best person to channel that energy? It was Donald J. Trump. Nobody else. I don't see anybody else in the race that had run that could channel their energy properly. There was nobody else that could go against Hillary and actually win or have any kind of chance. So it had to be him. And I'm glad that it's him. You know, I think he'll do at least a four year term, of course. He'll probably do one four year term and then pass it on over to Mike Pence. And then Mike Pence will be able to take the torch from there because Pence is pretty young still. Trump is 70 years old. So I'm not really sure he wants to do uh another grueling campaign cycle at 73, 74 years old, like the way he did this time. But my initial reaction to him becoming the president elect of the USA, the 45th president is one of jubilation. But at the same time, I'm kind of restrained. I'm kind of like calm. I'm not overly excited because I know that I was confident the whole time. See, many people are kind of excited, like extraordinarily excited because they're surprised. They're like, wow, I can't believe it. But me, I had faith from the beginning. You know, when I was on Tommy Lawrence show earlier in the summer, I called it. Uh, last question for you. What do you think the turnout is going to be for the African-American population come November? And which way do you think this is going to swing? Does Donald Trump still have a chance? Well, I think Trump's going to win. I mean, I don't think that's really a question at this point. I mean, you may see some of these polls. They come out and say that Hillary Clinton is going to win. But I don't think that's really going to be what, what's going on in the end. I think Trump will win. I had supreme confidence then. Supreme confidence before that, and I had supreme confidence all day uh, yesterday and into the night. I stayed up late. I knew he was going to win. As the map started to fill in with more and more red, and I started to see him leading in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and places like that, I'm like, yeah, it's over. Once he got Florida, it was over in my eyes. So I knew at that point we had it. But before that, I was confident that we would win. Now, you got liberals on the other side. You know, they're crying and whatnot. Now, I saw the uh, Paul Joseph Watson video. Where it's like a compilation of liberals crying and whatnot in clips from back earlier in the year where you had Ann Coulter going. Uh, I think it might have been Bill Maher's show. And then he asked her, well, who's going to win? And then she said, well, out of everybody that's announced, Donald J. Trump has the best chance. She had a straight face and was dead serious. And they all laughed at her. Saw Joy Ann Reed laughing. All of them laughing. Now, the response could be that you laugh at them now because they got crow on their face. But me, I never thought that they were in any way correct. You understand? I always knew that Ann Coulter was right. I always knew that I was right. And I always knew that people of the country would make the correct decision. Simple as that. So I never had any real doubts. But I'm just glad that we finally here. I'm glad that we finally here at this moment. And I'm, finally, and I'm glad that it's finally over. You know, we can just get forward to bringing the country together. And I'm going to talk about racism right quick before I close. I saw um, Lottery Crowder did a great teardown of the Young Turks. Shout out to Stephen Crowder. That was great. My brother, that was excellent. But one thing he mentioned was how they wanted to bring up racism. I think that's the, the overarching tone from the left. That's what they're blaming the election on. I suppose 50 million people are racist. But one thing Crowder brought up was the fact that many of the people that voted for Trump voted for Obama twice. So if you vote for a black man twice and he's president for eight years, 
do you all of a sudden now become a racist when you vote for Trump? It doesn't make any sense. It's not about racism. It's about people's daily values in life being trampled upon. It's about people feeling like they got robbed. It's about people just liking that particular candidate for what he stands for, being pro-life, being pro-marriage, being pro-Second Amendment, being pro the United States and not being a globalist shill like Hillary Clinton is and would have been in the White House. So that's what it was about. Racism is just a small portion of the thing. And here's one more thing about racism. If you look at the electoral map and who won, you can see the states where you have, you can see the areas of the country where there's a lot of rich white people, they all went Democrat, <laughs> right? You got places like, you got the, the Northeast of the country where it's like 80, 90% white people with like Connecticut. You know, Connecticut is like 90% white and there's a lot of rich white folks in Connecticut. But somehow I'm to believe that that's a progressive place because it went blue. But Mississippi, which is actually 34% black, only 58% white, they go red. Oh, it's a bunch of racist redneck white people down there. It's white people's fault. But that's the whole thing about the left. They want to just parrot these narratives out there that are false. And I think Trump winning was a direct slap in the face to all of that false narrative, to all of the improper and incorrect media, the yellow journalism that we face every day. We don't want that anymore. So it was a big middle finger and slap in the face to all of that. But beyond that, we stood more for what we believe in rather than standing up for against what they believe in. It was both, of course, yes, but more for what we actually believe in rather than it being out of spite. That's pretty much all I got for it. You know, I'm proud of all of y'all that went out there and voted. Everyone that represented in any kind of way, whether you were silent or very vocal, you know, it doesn't really matter what you did. You could have been a Hillary supporter in public to your friends, family, girlfriend, husband, whatever. But once you get in that booth and you're all by yourself, you make the right decision. You voted for Trump. You voted the correct way. That's all we can ask. Now, it's not over. All we got to do is keep going forward. Keep fighting against the SJWs. Keep fighting against globalism that infests our cities and states around the country. Keep fighting against it because you see what's happening over there in Europe with Brexit. They're still fighting that, even though I thought it was already decided with the referendum, but I suppose not. <laughs> you know, but I digress. My whole point here is that it's not over. This is just the beginning. Donald Trump becoming the president elect to be sworn into office in January 2017 is step one. Step two through one million or infinity is to constantly fight small battles, local, national, wherever it is in your household to really progress the idea of nationalism, to really progress the idea of being a sovereign state, to really progress the idea of an independent person being able to own the majority of the property, the majority of the fruits of their labor, rather than having it taken from them by force by the state to spend indiscriminately or to be wasted or to be given to a foreign country or to a foreign company to use for their own needs, to build up Beijing skyscrapers, to build up shopping malls in Saudi Arabia. Let's use American intellectual capital and American ingenuity for Americans rather than for everybody else. So that's pretty much all I got. You know, I am it's pretty excited, but I'm pretty worn out. I was up all last night. I did a live Facebook chat. Shout out to all of y'all that were in there that were there throughout the, all the technical difficulties that were there late in the night because the the thing didn't happen until like three o'clock as far as actual announcement is concerned. Uh, Hillary Clinton, by the way, went home. I knew once it got late at night that she was going to go home because I knew I was tired at that point in time, about two o'clock in the morning. I knew I was pretty much done. So I knew Hillary was not going to be able physically to stand up. And you know what? All jokes aside about Hillary, I think this was good for her, really, because I think she's ill. And the ill person is not going to be fit to be in office. Some would say, oh, she can just have her staff do it. But it's like we're not voting for a staff. We're voting for her. So if it's not going to be her that's actually making the decisions, then maybe she shouldn't be in office if she's not able to do her job. If she's not able to perform physically, she shouldn't be in office. She should just be on the sideline doing something else. You know, hopefully she does not get into politics anymore. Hopefully she's removed from politics. So a lot of that corruption, the pay for play stuff is no longer, is, is not going to be on the table anymore. 
and hopefully Bill and everybody else that's associated with them would stop getting their uh, Clinton cash pay for play hustle on. And hopefully Donald Trump has a, a investigation into that. Maybe she gets locked up. Maybe she doesn't. But what I want for is to the whole thing to just to stop. I want all of the corruption to stop. I want the swamp to be drained. I want true revolution, which is why this is not over. This is just the beginning. So whatever your thoughts about Donald Trump becoming the 45th president are positive or negative, let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.